right, it's Deborah. I'm back, and welcome to part two of our virtual Jane's Walk. We're um, starting today in front of Ottawa City Hall, and Ottawa City Hall is in the process of implementing bird-friendly design guidelines for the city. So we're super excited about that. They've been working on that um, since 2014, so we're really hoping that that will pass Planning Council in November. Uh, we're here today to look at the good and bad things about City Hall. Uh, you can, as you can see, this front facade is a bit reflective. And before I go further, we have a small audience with us today who are on the clock. They're a group of volunteers from the University of Ottawa in their community service learning program. And this makes part of their education and program. So thank you ladies for joining us this morning. And we're going to head off around City Hall and look at a couple of spots. actually a good news story um, about Safe Wings advocacy uh, and um, there was started with a bit of a tragedy there were a flock of cedar wax wings as you can see over here this tree is full of these trees are full of crab apples so <clears throat> so the wild birds are attracted here to eat and to eat insects and this walkway above us was transparent with glass so I won't get the numbers so I'm not um, over 20 cedar waxwings were injured or killed from a flock of 60 because they travel together in a large group and that was the impetus to get asking City Hall to put feather friendly um, wrap on this on this so they have done feather friendly wrap on both sides of the walkway and it's a lot less transparent and now we aren't finding any birds here Okay, so this morning looks like a good day for birds or perhaps one of our patrollers has already passed here. We frequently find birds that have collided on this wall and have fallen into the fountain here. There's a couple of issues. One is the reflection of the trees and the glass, but the other is there's a pool of water just inside here. So the birds think that they can get to this water. So this is a particularly dangerous wall and we're hoping that perhaps the city might do a mural or a wrap on this wall, um, make some creative community art that would also help the birds. Yeah, so just if you look really closely at this building, if you come for on your walk, you'll be able to see um, how there's fine lines in the glass that are, are at least two inches apart and they help save the birds. This in fact is manufactured glass that was in not a re it was retrofit the buildings like been like this from the beginning. So we're really pleased to have this kind of positive example in our world. Okay, so we're here at the Manu Life um, building and um, this is one of our particularly bad buildings in Ottawa. It's all glass, it's extremely reflective. And creates a mirror effect within the glass. Um, there's also glass across the street on the Government of Canada building. So it's, birds um, will often get confused in here. Um, the last time I was here, we found a live nut hatch just right here and we're able to rescue him for I've been told we found a bird. Here, our first one. So, unfortunately, 
fortunately, this little guy didn't make it and he was, he's fallen, hit probably one of these windows up here and fallen down. But I'm just going to demonstrate how if you were alive, what you would do. So you would come from behind, try and get between him and the building so he doesn't fly up and hit the building again because it's last year. grab a hold of him and they're really good like this they're really gonna wiggle around a lot and then you would gradually take him out and grab him and put him like this. Yep. And, and Renee's got the bag ready and so we would stuff him into this bag and then Something in the bottom, and then we pulled him up. So if you do find a bird during National Collision Week or any time, please um, give us a call at 613-216-8999 um, and place a live bird in a bag like this. A dead bird, you can just wrap it in a tissue or something like that, and then we'll also come to pick up a dead bird. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anu Kuneman and I'm one of the founders of Safe Ways Ottawa. Uh, and, uh, and you were you were just out on your patrol, right? We caught you in action. Yeah, so I'm just out on my morning patrol and uh, our new volunteers here just found a bird, so uh, I'm gonna identify it. Got a bag here. Oh, it's a warbler and it's a common yellow throat. And we can tell because it's got a very yellow throat, obviously, but it also has a little bit of a black mask that's coming in there. So it's probably a, a young one. And uh, yeah, patrolling for safe wings and looking for birds is actually a really good way to become a better birder, sadly. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very good at my fall warblers now. Uh, I used to not be so good at that, but uh, I've seen so many of them that it's pretty easy to identify them now. <laughs> We're here at the National Arts Centre, uh, which is uh, supposed to be a bird safe building, but unfortunately it's not. Yeah, so Anouk, I was showing the students the um, marks on the building and the fact that they're inside, Yeah, not outside. So, so why is that an issue? Yeah, so, so to be effective, any visual markers on the glass to prevent collisions, they have to be on the exterior surface of the glass. They have to be spaced ideally no more than two inches apart. They have to be high contrast, uh, and they have to be wide enough to be to be visible. Um, and with the pattern here on, on this glass, unfortunately, the uh, the markers are on the inside surface of the glass, and that means that it doesn't break up reflections all the time. So in this light, they may be fairly visible, but in other light conditions, they they just disappear because of the reflections on the glass. Uh, and the fact that they're high, that they're very low contrast, they're beige, and I was told it's because they wanted them to blend in with the original building, which is a bit of a silly thing to do if you want to have visual markers in the original um, And one of the main issues, however, is the spacing of those markers. So vertically, they're not too far apart if you measure them this way, but measured horizontally, they're 11 inches apart instead of 2 inches and 5 centimeters, which is the ideal. So we, we used to never find birds at the That's NAC cool. really, and now it's common. Mm -hmm. have to be, they have to be densely spaced, uh, it's because if you think of birds flying through the forest canopy, they're very good at avoiding obstacles, right? They can fit through very small spaces. So if you have wide visual markers like that, uh, they can just easily fly between them, or so they think, because they just don't know that there's glass in between those markers. 